Okay, I'll call the meeting to order, please. This is the Village of Riverside Board of Trustees special meeting for Wednesday, May 27th, 2020. The time is 5 o'clock. Please call the roll. President Sells. Here. Trustee Peters. Here. Trustee Galagos. Here. Trustee Chiza. Here. Trustee Hannon. Here. Trustee Evans. Here. Trustee Pollock. Here. Village Manager Francis. Here. Village Attorney Mars. Here. Also present Village Clerk Haley. Thank you very much. And Thanks everyone for uh, making time for this special meeting. Um, we also have with us tonight uh, Chief Weitzel, Chief Buckley, uh, Director uh, Apt. So um, first up is public comment. Uh, Ms. Haley, did we have any public comment on this evening's meeting? We did not receive any public comment. We'll move on then to reports of village officers. First up is the village president report. Uh, I would just like to say thank you to everyone who have really, it's been a full team effort of every single department in order to get to the point that we are uh, this evening where at least two of our restaurants will be able to start providing outdoor dining this Friday. Uh, everyone has done a great job and the interaction between our staff and the, the businesses in town has really been really been very moving to, to watch and it's been it's been a lot of work and done in a very short amount of time and I just want to say thank you to everyone. Uh, Manager Francis, your report please. I do not have a report this evening. We'll move on then to our one item of business for this evening and that is an ordinance approving temporary uses of the village right-of-way and other public and private spaces for outdoor dining and other authorized purposes and approving certain temporary signage. Uh, Director Apt, please. Uh, thank you. As you know, uh, the governor announced that restaurants would be permitted to provide outdoor dining um, in phase three in addition to carry out and delivery. So staff and the village attorney have been working on an ordinance that would allow for expanded outdoor dining areas for restaurants as well as for additional um, temporary regulations such as additional temporary signage and curbside pickup spaces uh, to help support our local businesses as we move into phase three. The ordinance that was drafted by the village attorney authorizes the village manager to approve temporary closures of village right-of-way and other public and private spaces for the placement of tables and tents, <clears throat> other dining and retail infrastructure for the purpose of facilitating consumption by members of the public, food, drinks, um, including alcoholic liquor, um, and for other purposes related to furthering economic recovery of the village business establishments. The village manager, in consultation with the chief of police, may temporarily close um, a public right-of-way to through traffic and or parking spaces and may authorize the closure of private property and parking areas um, uh, as deemed appropriate. Um, right up front, we have a few that are listed uh, that would be approved as part of this ordinance, and the ordinance does give the village manager the authority to approve additional locations um, after this ordinance is adopted, which she will report to the village board at their next regular meeting. Um, the areas we are closing um, are the parking spaces um, in the right-of-way sidewalk area on East Burlington in front of La Barra, as well as the parking spaces <clears throat> or on right-of-way sidewalk and right-of-way areas on Long Common in front of La Barra, parking spaces and right-of-way sidewalk areas on East Burlington in front of Choo Choo and Sawmilly, um, public property sidewalk area off of East Burlington, uh, east of the Landmark Kitchen, the east end of the building, as well as expanding Molly's Outdoor Dining Area or patio on Forest Avenue to the west in the grassy area that's adjacent to their um, existing outdoor dining area. The ordinance will also allow for additional um, additional signage and will allow us to provide additional 15-minute loading zone spaces on the village right-of-way, as well as signage related to that. Uh, we will be having this ordinance in effect um, till the region reaches stage four of the Illinois Restore Plan, or in no event later than September 7th. Um, it does waive the fee for outdoor dining permits. Um, however, there will be a requirement for certificates of insurance and hold harmless agreements, um, since they are going to be using village property. 
um, and all the outdoor dining areas must comply with all of the um, guidelines and protocols issued by the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity as well as the Department of Public Health and Centers for Disease Control. Um, all closure areas must be demarcated by physical barriers approved by the village manager if they are going to be in the street and also any areas where alcohol will be served do need to be demarcated. And that is all I have. Thank you very much. So before we have our discussion, I'd ask for a motion and a second to approve an ordinance approving temporary use of village right-of-way and other public and private spaces for outdoor dining and other authorized purposes and approving certain temporary signage. Trustee Gallagher, let's make said motion. Second, please. Trustee Pollock seconds. Thank you very much. Uh, discussion, questions, trustees? Uh, Trustee Gallagher has one question. Uh, how is the, the date of September 7th uh, come about? Th that is a suggestion from staff, and that was uh, Labor Day. Okay, but we could change it if we wanted to at a later date, right? Yes. Yeah. That's the only question I have. Thank you. If, if I can weigh in on that one just as a follow-up, I am, I am concerned about the, the language, and, and we're... This is on page four of the, of the proposed ordinance, um, section E. The, the way it currently reads, the last sentence says, but in no event later than September 7th. And uh, I, I agree with Trustee Galagos that I think that, that, that that should be up to the village board. So we might want to sure, make what, sure it's clear. The, the, this is Michael Mars. What if we just added right after September 7th, 2020, uh, except as such date may be extended by the Board of Trustees? Yep, that's fine with me. Trustees, what do you think? I would amend my motion. motion. Yeah, this is Trustee Hannon. Um, I, I, I'd, I'd like to suggest a, a different approach. Um, you know, obviously between last Thursday's meeting and now, um, you know, uh, uh, Attorney Myers and, and, and Village Manager Francis and her staff have been working feverishly, um, but, you know, obviously there's there's some scenarios we have not thought of. Uh, I'd rather go with sort of the approach that the state of Illinois has gone by issuing uh, sort of a temporary order with a view towards extension. So do we take an approach that it's, you know, roughly 60 days for this? Uh, I would suggest moving it to August 7th because that would be, the day after a regularly scheduled village board meeting with a view that we would renew it, but also give us an opportunity to make uh, revisions or, or, or other minor adjustments to it uh, to address that any concerns that may arise in the next, um, you know, the first 60 days of, of this experiment. Uh, you know, the view would be obviously it would, would be renewed but I think it's easier to make changes in, in the context of renewing an existing ordinance rather than having a motion to go back and, and amend something that runs through uh, you know, after Labor Day. Thank you, Trustee Hannon. Uh, trustees, what do you think about that approach? I, Trustee Gallagos, I rather thought that this gave that power to the staff to make such determinations and only to report back to the board in case we do need to make changes. That's why I thought it was written rather flexible. I believe it's already implied in the ordinance itself. Other comments? Uh, this is Trustee Pollock. I guess I would ask the village attorney um, if, if it remains as is with the provision that you just added uh, that after September 7th it could be extended unless extended by the board. Uh, if there are problems uh, along the way, uh, can we uh, change the ordinance? We, we can amend the ordinance at any time, I presume. Absolutely, yes. So I think uh, my opinion would be to leave it September 7th unless extended, but then as a separate matter, ask the uh, staff to give us updates at each board meeting and if we see a problem, we can uh, address it at, at any time that uh, between now and September. I think the September 7th date gives a little more assurances to the businesses who are, you know, that, that, that it'll be there for them, provided they 
um, operate safely and 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 you know the thing that would cause us to end this is if the operations are not being done safely that they're not following uh, public health guidelines I'm very confident they will um, but if if it does happen that they don't or we have unforeseen problems I think at any board meeting uh, prior to any board meeting we could ask for an ordinance modifying or revoking the ordinance. Other comments, please? This is Trustee Evans. Um, I agree with Doug's, Doug's idea, um, or Doug's comments. He um, sort of, it would sort of be like a living, breathing, temporary ordinance where if we need to make adjustments we can and at the same time with the September 7th date we give the businesses a little bit of breathing room um, to give them time to get this um, their outdoor dining plans um, in the get in the groove of outdoor dining and then they know that they have you know a couple more months of time to you know to keep their restaurants in business keep a, some consistency in how they're serving customers um, versus, um, you know, it's just, I guess, I don't know if it's 90 days or maybe 100 days, whatever it is, um, just 60 days just seems like not enough time for them to really, like, you know, get in the role, get in the swing of things and, you know, roll out their business, outdoor business. Thank you. Uh, trustee uh, yeah, I, I have a question for, I suppose, Village Manager Francis. Because, um, you, you know, I think Trustee Hannon brings up a good point. But my question, and so does Trustee Pollock, with regard to the 30-day window. To two questions. One, if there are issues, how quickly can we act on that? And two, do we plan on having sort of like a, a meeting a, a, a meeting with the with the um, with the uh, sorry my kids walked in a meeting with um, with the managers or the owners to sort of kick this off as a group since it's, since we're to uncharted territories and there's only three restaurants to kind of say hey look here's the here's the ten key concerns that we do have that might arise and and let's make sure that we focus on these and work together as a team as a group to make sure that this goes as successfully as possible I mean I. I do. I call them a scrum in development. Where we do a team scrum every morning, where we talk through that stuff. And I'm wondering if we're planning on doing that to kick this sucker off, and just make sure you know. While it's, it's fine that we believe everyone will do this properly, it's also good to sort of sit down and lay down the, the, the criteria and the expectations that the village has for for Scott, Brian, and Caesar to make sure that this is wildly successful. Just a thought. So a couple of things. Thank you, President Sells. Um, to touch upon what you're saying, we've been meeting with, whether it's the business owner or management or a combination of the two, for the businesses that have already expressed interest and have provided us site plans. To have all the businesses come in, um, given the, the nuances involved with each individual business, probably wouldn't be the most productive approach. And so that's why we've been doing it individualized. So staff has already met with, um, Scott Zimmer at Choo Choo to help outline the different barriers and what's the, the best method for setting up their outdoor seating. We've started that as well with Labara and then any other businesses, bless you, that we may have that express interest, we would continue to do that. As it relates to um, making sure that we're holding them accountable, we do have an outdoor uh, dining application that they will have to sign off on and provide us detailed information. It's not a very cumbersome application, but it does provide us the framework and the insurance um, and hold harmless agreements that we need for our purposes as a village. Um, but we can change some of the sign-offs so that if they are not abiding by the rules as it relates to the village um, and what's being outlined both by the state by DCEO, by CDC, and they're in violation or creating issues, whether it's noise violation, smoking, things of that sort, then we could tell them that, unfortunately, your outdoor dining license is suspended. Now, whether or not the board would want us to do that 
um, for a, suspending it for a short period of time, a longer period. Um, like I said, those businesses that we started to work with are very amenable and understand the requirements and regulations. However, telling them that if for some reason they are in violation, they could be in jeopardy of this being suspended would be helpful. No, I understand that, Jessica. I've got three comments to that. So one, what I'm talking about is like the signs around town, right? We're strong, we are stronger together. I, I'm more thinking, and it's only two restaurants right now, it shouldn't be that difficult to coordinate schedules. I, and if we don't want to do it, we don't want to do it. My suggestion, just from a productivity perspective, is if we can get them together and do sort of like a team raw raw scrum, we say, hey, look, these are the expectations for what we want to do, these are some of the concerns we may have, in order to, 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 to negotiate what may be around the corner. It's not the, the restaurants that are, I think we're going to have the issues from, but there might be the patrons and helping and guiding them through the ways that we could possibly, what, what might happen, how we can work. It's just, it's just a thought. It, it is what it is. We don't have to, but I find it incredibly beneficial in my company. Um, and I do it regularly. I do roundtables regularly with, with my competitors as well. Um, I try and do it at least once a month with two or three competitors, trying to understand what some of the hurdles that they're facing are. So I thought it might have been a good opportunity, um, sort of, I'm, I'm, I'm following the, the law of the land right now, so uh, if it's not, if, it, if, it, if the schedules of, of the restaurants can't be coordinated, we don't think that's productive, and I don't want to waste their time. I just, it was just a suggestion. Other comments, please, on this issue? Yeah, this is Trustee Hannon. I, I really, uh, you know, my concerns um, are, are on, you know, what village manager Francis mentioned, that the no smoking, the social distancing, um, and, and like the idea that, you know, it's up to each uh, restaurant to enforce these rules. Um, you know, I, I was in uh, Columbus over the weekend uh, where they'd have everything open, and quite frankly, some of the uh, bars and restaurants that were open uh, you would think that there was not a pandemic uh, in place. So I would love some type of enforcement mechanism in this ordinance that if there's, you know, lax enforcement of the no smoking policy, uh, lax enforcement of social distancing, um, you know, that the village manager has the discretion, you know, to suspend the outdoor permit uh, from, you know, anywhere to, you know, one to five days. So, uh, you know, not, not as if there wouldn't be warnings issued, but just they know that, you know, if, if, you know, you walk by a restaurant and there's 13 people gathered around a table and 10 people standing over their shoulders all to talking and smoking, you know, they know the next day they're going to get a letter saying, okay, you're, you're, you're shut down for five days because you didn't police what your patrons are doing. I think that's very important. You know, the, sec the second comment I want to make, uh, you know, is on the hours. Um, you know, if, if we're going to have uh, tables in the public way, um, you know, in, in the, the streetscape parking, um, you know, do we want to consider, you know, outside their existing footprint, having them close down at 10 o'clock on Monday through Thursday and, you know, on the weekend, their existing hours up to 11 would apply. Um, you know, my concern is that, you know, at some point, you know, notwithstanding that these are restaurants, they're also, uh, to some extent, bars. You know, do we have people sitting, you know, sitting in those street tables, um, you know, out till 11, 11.30 on a Tuesday night, um, enjoying themselves? I just, I just think, you know, those... those you know, enforcement and common courtesy, I think, needs to be put into this because I don't want to see this uh, getting abused. So um, let's, if I can suggest this, if, if uh, Mr. Mars, on uh, page page five, the, <clears throat> the first two subsections to uh, I3, A and B, those look like they, they might be good places to put some kind of empowering language with regard to the village manager's uh, authority to to take action in the case that that these. I mean, it's. I think it's obvious that our existing regulations, the village code regulations, uh, we already have the authority to act on those. 
but seen, given that there's this, there's this kind of federal state overlay now of other, of other parameters, do you think it might be a good idea to put something in one, one or both of those uh, sections, A and B, with regard to the manager having that, that power to suspend the, uh, the, the temporary use? Uh, I do, President Sullivan. I was going to suggest, actually, I was looking at uh, Section 4 of the ordinance on page 6. And this, this, this section speaks to the, the first subject that Trustee Hannon and others brought up also about the, um, you know, the changes. And, and it starts off by acknowledging that, you know, we're, we're doing this in a in, uh, quickly evolving and ever-changing environment. Um, and goes on to say the board delegates to the village president and village manager the ability to implement such modifications to the temporary uses authorized here under as may be necessary due to those changes and conditions, so long as such changes are consistent with the overall intent of this ordinance. It is further understood that these temporary uses may need to be postponed, suspended, modified, and or terminated for a variety of reasons, including health and safety reasons. In addition, these temporary uses may need to be withdrawn if they're abused or if violations of this ordinance or other conditions warrant. And so I was thinking maybe right after that, talking about the, the village manager's ability to, um, to, to take enforcement action uh, against specific uh, violators. So trustees, let me ask you this. If we, if we were to uh, add the language that Trustee Pollock uh, suggested with regard to having the September 7th date, but then uh, the village board have, has the ability to extend it, and we also add the modification or the language that Mr. Mars just mentioned. Uh, let's just take that part first before we get to the hours. What do you think about that uh, option? President Sells, this is Trustee Hannon. It, I think it would be very helpful just as far as educating the public as well if we put in, you know, violation of no smoking rules, violation of social distancing in that language, just so it's clear to everybody what's going to end the party. Yep. Um, um, this is Trustee Pollock. I agree with Trustee Hannon. Uh, the stronger the language we can have for uh, enforcement, the better. Um, it's everyone's best interest, especially the restaurants. That uh, and, and our residents and patrons that we have enforcement, strong enforcement ability. Well, with, with regard to that, on on page five, um, we the mask and so, social distancing. Oh, and by the way, I would suggest changing that to physical distancing instead of social distancing throughout. Okay. Um, mask and physical distancing, smoking uh, is already is already mentioned. Uh, so. Mr. Hannon and Mr. Pollock, you, you think it needs to be stronger than what's already in there? I, I, I'm sorry, could you, could you read that again, what it says? On, on well, the, the this is Attorney Mars. Maybe if uh, President Sells, I, I think what they were suggesting was when we add the language about uh, enforcement just to, as part of that, call out some of the things that uh, that, that are mentioned in those earlier se earlier sections, like the like the physical distancing and the smoking, as part of that same sentence. Is that well, correct? As long as, we don't, as long as we don't work ourselves into a box, I mean, sometimes when you start making lists, that can that can blow up in your face. As long as it's clear that that yeah, that, that these are examples of things that could slip sure. in the party, but not exclusive. We'll, we'll, we'll use that old legal standby, including but not limited to. <laughs> right, Mr. Hannon, does that work for you? I think it works spectacularly. Okay. Mr. Pollock? Uh, I agree. Okay, so uh, is, are, is, does anyone disagree with that approach? Okay, so we'll do that. Now let's move on to, to uh, Mr. Hannon's second point with regard to the uh, specifying the hours. And I believe your idea, Mr. Hannon, is Monday through Thursday, uh, no later than 10, and then weekends, no later than 11. Is that right? Uh, that's right, and again, I think we need to differentiate between their regular footprint and the extended footprint. Yeah, my concern is about the extended footprint after 10 o'clock Monday through Thursday. Trustees, what do you think of that? As Trustee Pollock, I have a question. What are the normal hours for outdoor, the existing outdoor dining areas? 
Director App, do you happen to know that off your top of your head? Yes, the current code allows outdoor dining until 11 p.m. seven days a week. I did. I just just for information, I did speak with Mr. Zimmer today, and and he he is fine with ending his service at at 10 o'clock. Um, I didn't specifically ask about the weekends, um, but uh, I think Mr. Hannon's idea provides the protection that we're looking for while giving the the, the owners and operators what they need. Well, Chelsea Geller goes, if, you know, one owner wants it to end at 10 o'clock, another one might want that till 11 like we normally allow. So I, I, I think we should stick uniformly to 11 p.m. and let a business owner decide what time they want to end if it's earlier. This is Trustee Evans, and um, I agree with Trustee Galagos. I don't want to micromanage the restaurants with their the time. And, you know, the truth is right now everyone's home. So, you know, let's just give some people something to do, give the businesses some extra hours of business. I mean, maybe we can revisit if we think there's going to be a big problem by letting the restaurants stay open a little late on the weeknights. But um, I would like to leave it to the businesses. Other comments, please? Yeah, I, I agree with Trustee Hannon. I think we need, to, I think we need that set times. You know, we can always adjust it, as we talked about earlier, if it, if it, if it, if it helps. But I, I think having set times provides the parameters that we need. We, we, we have to remember while we're trying to help these businesses, we, all, we are in the middle of a global crisis. Um, and I think that having some limitations on that will be beneficial. And again, we can always, we can always move the goal line a little bit if, um, if things are going well. So um, and this is, I'm, I'm sorry, President Sells, just interject. I, I just want to make it clear to get to Trustee Evans' point. I, I, I'm not suggesting that within their existing footprint they would have to shut down at 10. Uh, my, my concern is the extended footprint, you know, again, which is out in the streets, um, you know, sort of generally out where, where, you know, restaurants aren't normally. I'd like to see that end early during the week. So, you know, the, the restaurant could stay open till 11, the normal time, but they would have to bring it into their regular footprint. So for... You know, Labara, it's under the awning that they currently have, as opposed to the tables they may have set up in the in the parking spaces. So, um, other than uh, other than Trustee Gisa and Hannon, do any of the other trustees want to have that limitation? This is Trustee Pollock. Um, I'm very sympathetic to to the point that Trustee Hannon is making. My concern is just, is just the logistics of it. Uh, for example, you know, someone who happens to be sitting outside, uh, uh, you know, happens to be one table away from where now they can't sit there, and now they have to move over, and it seems awkward and unnecessarily awkward. Um, I would be comfortable with either uh, just, just keeping it all at 11 p.m., seven days a week, uh, as per the current code, the only question in my mind I would have is whether it needs to be moved to 10 p.m. Sunday through Thursday, and I would just go with the majority of the board on that particular question. Uh, this is Trustee Pollock. I believe my recommendation just applied to Monday through Thursday, so it, okay. it would not extend to the weekends. Okay. Someone else had a comment? I generally agree with Trustee Pollock, I, I am sympathetic to the issue as well. I'm thinking that if it certainly, if it, if it becomes an issue, we're going to learn about it very quickly. Um, if people are out there at 1030 at night at creating chaos, and I think this board would have the power to, to change it at that point. Okay, so now I'm, I'm a little confused as to where we are. So, um, let, let me just say, who, who, would, let's, who would like to leave it the way it currently is for 11 o'clock, knowing that we can always amend that moving forward? Can, we, can I just have a, 
like kind of a show of hands verbally about who is willing to leave it at 11. Trustee Gallios would be in favor of it being 11 o'clock across the board. Trustee Evans to 11. Trustee Peters. Uh, Trustee Pollock, I, I reluctantly I would say uh, leave it at 11, uh, seven days a week, uh, and uh, with the understanding that uh, we can we can change that in the future. And the only change I would, hopefully, the only change we would entertain is dialing that back to 10 uh, Monday through Thursday. Okay, so that that's four. Um, perhaps what we can, can do, because uh, I think I, I think that we're all in the same place here in terms of what what we want, and uh, I think that we just will make it a point to stress to the uh, owner operators that this is a concern of the of the village board, and that the, they need to make sure that they monitor noise and that kind of thing. Uh, and if, because if they don't, then we'll take action to move it back to 10 o'clock. So, Mr. Hannon or Gisa, did you want to say anything further on this point before we move on? Okay, so we'll continue. Are there other questions, concerns, suggestions with the, with the ordinance in front of you? So hearing none, I think that concludes our discussion. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Trustee Peters. Aye. Trustee Galagos. Aye. Trustee Giza. Aye. Trustee Hannon. Aye. Trustee Evans. Aye. Trustee Pollock. Aye. The motion carries. Uh, we have no need for executive session this evening. I just want to thank everyone again for taking the extra time to, to make this happen for the residents and for our businesses. Uh, I greatly appreciate the, the overtime and effort that's gone into this. So uh, with that, I would ask for a motion and a second to adjourn. Trustee Gallows makes that motion. Second by Trustee Pollock, second. Please call the roll. Trustee Peters. Aye. Trustee Galagos. Aye. Trustee Giza. Aye. Trustee Hannon. Aye. Trustee Evans. Aye. Trustee Pollock. Aye. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone. Take care of one another. And with that, the meeting is adjourned.